in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to add a controller to your game. So first of all, let me show you this up and running. So here we have a standard WGBX desktop app, and we've just got a background image of the controller that I'm using, and I've added a crosshair. So if I push uh, the buttons, you can see I'm being highlighted and uh, also these are buttons and this is a button as well. And then um, when I move the crosshairs around, you can see which uh, joystick I'm using. So there's two joysticks on my controller. So before I go into the code, um, just uh, a couple of things I want to explain. When you push a button, we actually get sent a value of the button code um, that was pressed. And when you use the joystick, you also get sent a what's called an access code. So it's the same as the button code, but you also get sent a float variable of how much you moved uh, the joystick um, on its axis. And then interestingly, these two buttons down here are also considered to be uh, kind of joysticks, as in that you get sent a value of how hard you push the button. All right, so uh, let's look at the code behind this. So the first thing we need to do is add in to our build cradle, and this is the, um, the root build cradle of the project. We have to add this line into core um, so that the controller gets added to your project. And this version number you can get from uh, GitHub, um, so libgbx, gbx controllers, and the latest version is 2.2.2 .2 and I think there's actually, if you want to get a snapshot, there's a 2.2.3 snapshot, which you could also use. So as I said, this is a standard desktop project. Um, so in my desktop launcher, the only thing I changed was I wanted to make my uh, screen a little bit bigger for the background graphic. Um, otherwise nothing's different here. And then in our core, I actually have uh, four classes. Um, one is the normal class setup when you set up a default libgbx project, which I call controller.demo. Uh, another class here, which will uh, take in the input from our controller. And I've got two classes here that hold property values. The button class just holds uh, some properties uh, for the demo. So when you push a button, the, the button's highlighted in green. So this is the green image, so just its position. And then uh, the other class I've got here, called, which I call control instruction, is basically uh, holds the um, button that was pushed or the, or the um, joystick that was used and put a value in here if I want to move the uh, crosshairs around. So this is used just to update the UI. So basically button and control instruction I'm just using to update the UI for this demo. So um, let's look at the uh, code in what I call the controller demo, which is just a standard uh, libgbx um, class. It's set up when you set up the full project. Uh, so it always extends the application adapter. And then just so I can pass uh, messages between the game controller and the UI, I use property change listener. So what that allows you to do is uh, whenever a property changes, you can uh, pass that to anyone that's listening for that property change. And I'm using that to update the UI. So in the create method, uh, I've got a stage. I load in the text, uh, texture atlas, which is uh, just the background image. And then you can see the buttons here, which highlight when I push something and the crosshairs. Um, I load in my background image. Um, I add it to the stage. I then load in all the uh, images for the buttons. So when, the, when I push something, it will be uh, highlighted. Um, and I store those in two, um, two map um, arrays, one for where it's a button and one where it's um, <clears throat> a joystick. Um, uh, the reason I do that is because actually, unfortunately, the ID for buttons are also used for uh, joysticks. So to separate, I needed to separate them out so I knew what was being pushed. Uh, then I uh, load up my crosshair image. And then finally, I instantiate our game controller class down here, add a listener, 
So we can basically um, send messages back and forth between the UI and the game controller. And then down the bottom here is actually the, um, the render method. So if we um, update the controller, I'll show you that in a minute, and we draw the stage. And then, and then this uh, override um, is something you have to implement when you use uh, proxy change this mouse. And basically, when I get change event in, I hide any of the buttons that were shown in the green image. And then I look to see if it was a button or a, a joystick used. And if it was a button, I update the uh, image, show the green hi highlight. If it's a joystick, I do the same, but I also use um, move our crosshairs around. So let's go to the game controller class. So basically, this implements control listener. Um, and when you do that, you have to implement some overrides. So the game controller is connected, disconnected, button down, button up, and access moved. Uh, so basically, uh, you can see, you can tell what these first two do. They tell you if the controller has been connected or disconnected. Button down is if you push the button. And then button up, obviously, you've released that button. And then access moved is your joystick. So button down or button up, you get sent through the button code. And that's what I'm using uh, to highlight which button I've pushed. And then, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, when you move a joystick, you get the code of the joystick that was moved and its float, uh, the value of how much it moved by. Um, and each joystick has two values. Um, so the first one has a zero and a one. So zero, um, I believe, is for up and down. And then one is for left or right, and then you get a, a value sent through of how much you moved it up or down, or how much you moved it left and right. And then, um, and then, I also have an update method, and I'm using that um, to listen out, uh, or basically get. A, I use that to get an update on what joystick is being moved. So you can see this uh, controller get access. So I look for the. Uh, this is one one of the joysticks here. Let me just highlight that. So this is this is left or right zero, and one is up and down. And then this is the second joystick here. So uh, two is left or right, and um, three is up and down. And then I also, when I'm listening for how much they've moved, just to be certain that the player actually intended to move the joystick. I actually did, um, wait until the value is over 0.5. Um, and it ranges between minus one and plus one. So you can see here it's a, I was very uh, obviously a negative. And that's really all there is to it. So um, when you move the joystick, um, I listen out for, um, uh, I do two things. First of all, um, so when you move the joystick, I basically, um, Every uh, every every render method, um, I listen out for the joystick being moved. I find out which joystick was moved. Um, I load up a, what I call the controller instruction class, which is, as I mentioned, let's get some basic values I can use to update the UI. And then I basically fire off a property change that gets picked up by the UI. And uh, then we update what we see on screen. And the same for uh, button down, I'm doing the same thing. I listen out, I uh, create a control instruction that just tells me what button code was changed, and then I fire a property through to my UI so I can update. And that's all there is to it. So let me just um, show you up running again, and then, you can, and then I can at the same time show you what's happening behind the scenes. So um, loaded up the UI, which is basically what controller demo class is doing. Um, and then when I move my push a button like this, this is calling into my button down class. I get the ID of the button and send the value to the UI. So it displays a, a nice sort of graphic for me. And then same for the joystick. I'm sending a message up um, of uh, from here. Um, from the update method that I'm moving the joystick around and we can also tell which joystick I'm using. So I hope that's useful to you. Please put any questions or comments in the comment section below. And uh, thank you for listening.